So I'd like to thank you all for coming back, or anyone who is new in the room. Um, and to our speakers in the first half, it was quite an enlightening discussion afterwards as well, thank you. Um, we, uh, this session is being run by GeoSIG, we are the Geophysics Special Interest Group for CIFA. The committee itself, we're all volunteers, we volunteer our time, we have lots and lots to do, so we would appreciate any input we can get from you. We don't need you to be 24-7, we would like you to be involved. You can be a member of GeoSIG and receive our updates, even if you're not a geophysicist, and uh, just an interest in geophysics in general is great. We also have our email address, ifa underscore geosig at gmail.com, which is on our website. If you have any questions for us, please do. That's still input. It's still you helping us to form our better profession. So we are here to promote and improve our profession. And in the room we have, I think, I can see a number of consultants and curators. Could, could we have a show of hands who isn't a geophysicist in their day-to-day -day job, just to get a feel? Amazing. So we've got... <laughs> so, so we do have a broad spectrum in the room. And this is what we need. We want to, write, re, we want to revise our guidance, not in a technical way, but there is enough technical guidance out there at the moment. We want to um, provide guidance to the end users of our products, so to, to help um, and empower them to understand what bad data is, what a bad product is, um, and hopefully um, avoid situations as Helen described in the first half during the discussion. There have never really been wide scale st uh, studies into the effectiveness of geophysics in archaeology. We've got a number of region specific studies, but truly most people use the finger in the air estimate. Um, we are in talks with Historic England um, as to how we can improve on this, um, but at the moment what we have is the handout that Mark provided in the first half. If you can fill it out, it will be on the GeoSIG webpage or on the CIFA website. For those who can't attend today, um, and we're asking if you can return it within two weeks, or if you haven't actually managed to get a paper handout, please do have a look. So we, we have for a while been looking at revising our guidance. Our AGM last year, we had Dinah Sage <coughs> from South Yorkshire come in and talk to us about how they, how she as a curator uses geophysical deliverables. And at that point, it did become clear to us that we need to help curators in their role. So we came up with ideas which I think Mark has nodded to in the uh, handout such as providing briefs, as Norfolk have in the past, and standardised specifications that all surveys must conform to, otherwise they won't be accepted in the first place. Um, we uh, also talked about having a sign-off sheet which states which, where the uh, report hasn't actually conformed to guidance and to give a reason so that the curator themselves can make an assessment or get in touch with Historic England or ourselves. But everything that you put into the handout today, we'll be looking at, we will be, um, we, we've, formed, we've created it so we can form stats from them, but also your comments are gonna be really important to us because we need your opinions. So to the first half, um, there was some broad things coming out of that, but very strongly. We need, as an industry, to use more complementary techniques, but to do this we need to, again, inform curators and consultants as to what geophysics can really do for them. It's not a tick box exercise, it is a risk management tool. And without geophysical training, can you really use that tool effectively? Or specify how somebody should be using it effectively. Archiving came up. Again, we do talk about it regularly. It is on the list. 
we will be talking to ADS again about it. If you have any ideas or anything you can or can't, cannot do, put it on the form, email us, we will be sorting out for you. Um, larger sites and how our current guidance isn't really keeping up with the work we're doing now. And somebody did mention out of date, but considering uh, EAC was written in 2015, that's quite worrying in itself. We need to future-proof our own guidance to make sure this doesn't happen. So what we aim to do as Geosig is to teach the wider community about geophysics, not how to do it, but how to use what we've done for them as specialists. We can't do a one foot will fit all. It's just going to be impossible with the variables, geology, archaeology, site conditions. But as Mark mentioned, why, is, why aren't there specialist geophysical consultants? Why aren't there more geophysicists in consultancy full stop? We need to teach anybody who commissions surveys that the risk management tool has a cost versus benefit aspect. If you are able to collect good quality data, you are able to understand what archaeology you're looking for and get the best technique in the first place, you are going to save money down the line. Sometimes that money may just be saved through time, but holding up national um, projects can run into millions down the line. So, what we really want to know is, are we providing the product our end users want or need? We are writing technical reports. We are technical specialists. A couple of things that we haven't heard in the first uh, half, um, we haven't heard anything about health and safety really. We have included it in our handout. It is quite a big issue within our industry. Working within the larger projects, you're working with um, tier one requirements. Lots of people, lots of the larger companies are used to this now. Smaller companies, not so. We need to empower our geophysicists to be able to work under these conditions. Quality processes. This happens, and again, in the larger companies, in a small one-man band who is QCing your work in small units within large consultancies are geophysicists the people who are QCing your work. 